In this video, we are going to be touring my 400 days in hardcore Minecraft world, and you guys have the ability to download this world via the Patreon link in the description. We're going to be checking out everything I built, giving you guys a full tour of the world, and for anyone that does become a Patreon, will be able to download this at the ender tier or higher. If you are interested in getting the world download, please support me on Patreon because it helps out a ton, and it does support me making these videos, and it's very much appreciated, and the world download will be active accessible for all Patreons that have the tier ender or higher. Are you ready for the tour? Let's get straight into it. Hello everyone, it's Metricod here and welcome to my 400 days in hardcore Minecraft world tour. Uh, I am currently stood on the top of my house, but let's take everything back right to where it all started. But first, let me grab some firework rockets out of my shulker box so I know I have enough to tour the world with you guys. So it all started right here, surrounded by the ocean, and we currently have a nether portal here. I don't actually remember why that's there, uh, but that wasn't obviously there at the start. We actually travelled all the way in that direction, and a lot of people asked me how I got so much food at the start, and it was just literally making an axe and killing a bunch of mobs that spawned around here and all the way down there on my travels. So on day three, this is the mountain that I was on. That was the first ever village that I came across. That was where I did all my diamond mining in the swamps using clay patches. And then over here is where I've set up my base. And just so you have the coordinates, there they are on screen. So I think it would be wise to start at my modern house. This is currently the main room and ignore all the storage. It is just filled with junk. I never sorted it properly. And this is my storage room. And I was going to do the interior in the 400 days, but I got sidetracked and I wanted to just build a ton of farms instead. Then you come over to this part of the house. This is where the underground segment is. You have a mass smelter here, which uh, is, I don't know why it's turned on. I must have just left it on. That's what was making them really annoying minecart noises uh, above my base just then. But this is my trading hall right here, which I think I built on episode, not episode, uh, day 200 or the 200 days in hardcore Minecraft. This is where I had everything. Uh, so I've got all my librarians for the enchanted books. I got the stonemasons for building blocks. I've got the farmers there for trading carrots and yeah, a bunch of other villagers. Then you walk out of there and to the left is my enchanting setup, which I don't really use a whole lot because this is mainly just for like when I want to get random enchants on books. Um, but because of these guys right here, I don't typically use this anymore. And then this next room here is where I do or did do a lot of my smelting before I actually built this in my 400 days. Uh, that was basically my smelting room and this is where I brewed all of my potions. And then coming down here, this is my villager breeder or so-called villager breeder that is pretty much it for the house i didn't really have any ideas or anything for the interior so i kind of just left it i kind of wanted to build more farms instead but as you walk out my house you the first thing you'll see is planted sugarcane along with my nether portal and a massive sugarcane farm which ultimately didn't really produce as much sugarcane as i thought it was going to i'm not entirely sure if there was a problem with it or maybe because i'm out of the spawn chunks I've no idea. Why is there a cat stuck in a boat? <laughs> what are you doing? Then right over here, we have my cow and sheep farm, where I also bred the cats from my creeper farm, which I'll show later. This annoying farm is where I got all of my carpets from my creeper farm as well, as well as breeding the cats over there. Yeah, you guys are really, really loud. Then right over there is where I have my first sugarcane farm and my first ever bamboo farm, which I never really used a whole lot. Then I've got my wheat farm out here. Then I've got my automatic cactus farm, which I built in the last video right there. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's not really that quick. I don't tend to use this a whole lot either. I was just going to get a bunch of green dye to build a greenhouse. Uh, which I didn't end up doing in 400 days. Then just on the top of this hill, we have our iron farm. This is a very basic design, but it took me so long to get the zombie in there. It probably took me about, I think, three or four nights to try and get one zombie in a composter. And then further down here, this is my pathetic attempt at making some custom trees along with an automatic melon and pumpkin farm, which I think seems to be working quite well. And then just to the right of that, we have our massive, and I mean massive, carrot patch. Look at that. And custom bridge as well. I got this idea off of Google Images using campfires as like the, the walkway. Uh, but yeah, this, if I was to use Fortune 3, could probably get me over a full double chest worth of uh, carrots. So this is, uh, I mean, it took a long time to plant back, but I mean, it was worth it. Also, just note that this is a copy of my world. So anything I do in this video, for example, if I was to die while doing this tour, it wouldn't affect my main world because as I said, this is just a copy. So that is pretty much it for the home area, but let's go and take a look 
at some of the farms that I built way out this way. And the first one that I'm going to visit just out in a bit of an angle over here is my creeper farm, which took me a very long time to make. And halfway through the time lapse, I remember we had a power cut, so I didn't actually get the first part of the build on record. Uh, but other than that, we got the job done. Very, very fast and efficient creeper farm. I can probably AFK for about 5-10 minutes and that will just send them all into the nether. And the bit that I built in the nether will just be completely filled with creepers. Which allows me to get quite a lot of rockets and quite a lot of TNT if I choose to do so. And I've still left all my shulkers out here with all the building materials. That's nice, right? <laughs> I'm so unorganized when it comes to this stuff. It's unreal. And then just north of the creeper farm, which is right there, we have our raid farm that we built in the last episode with a sorting system. This thing is incredibly, incredibly overpowered, especially when it comes to the emerald and the totems of undying. I don't know if I moved all these to my storage system or not. Let's just have a quick look. A little bit, yep, okay, there you go. You can clearly see how overpowered this thing is. It's a shame we can't actually filter the crossbows. I'm sure there will be a way, but uh, yeah, very, very good for emeralds. I'd be able to get an emerald beacon out of this just by AFK in for maybe like five Minecraft days. Definitely a full emerald beacon sat there waiting for me to build. And then just north of that is my ocean monument farm, which I built in my 200 days video. Uh, this is a design that I saw on Shulkercraft, where it's very, very good at getting you a bunch of sea lanterns and materials and like raw cod and stuff. Um, yeah, so when you're up there, they tend to spawn at the top of the temple, which will drag them into the nether, force to be killed by campfires, and then drop all of the loot, which is pretty, pretty good. And then just over here, the coordinates are right here. This is where I built the drown farm, which uh, isn't that effective. I must have AFK'd at this for like 10, 15 days in my 400 days video. It was absolutely crazy how like low the rates were and how unlucky I actually got when getting a trident. But I mean, we definitely got there. And then over here is exactly where I built my slime farm in the last video. So just so you know how to get to this, dive straight down, down these ladders. And this is where I built my slime farm where you don't actually have to, oh, you don't actually have to dig out the entire chunk for this to work. It will just get you slime balls while you're AFK and up on that platform. So that is everything for the overworld. We are now jumping into the nether, which leads you straight to my nether hub. This is what it looks like. And as you go out uh, this way, that's the hole down to the actual uh, never itself, so you don't have to be on the roof all the time. First things first, I'm going to show you where the creepers will end up and where the drowned will end up from the farm. So without cutting the footage, I will just show you exactly where it is. So there's a portal down there. There is the creeper section right here, which obviously I've killed and they're not. there's not many there because I didn't AFK. But that's where they'll all come out. Uh, that's where the guardian farm leads to. And then if you just go over this, this is where... The drowned farm is right here so all the farms are very very close uh, in close proximity in the nether and yeah that's where you can get yourself a trident or at least spend 20 days near enough like i did trying to get a trident also while i'm here i'm not entirely sure if i'm going to do a 500 days because i feel like i kind of want to do some extra challenges such as 100 days in a lush caves only world perhaps or maybe 100 days in one block i kind of want to try something different than this world but that doesn't mean this world's going to be over i kind of want to get your guys thoughts on something real quick before we continue the tour so i was thinking do i continue this world on a hardcore minecraft let's play type style or do i just not post it at all let me know in the comments. Okay, so back on the nether roof over here, you will see right there, just over where the hole is to go down, that's where my first ever gold farm was built. Now, this is a very, very popular design, but it's not very good on the rate. So this just uses four layers with turtle eggs in between trap doors. And as you can see, these guys will just fall to their death and drop the loot in the chest. And it's not very fast at all. Uh, but I mean, early game, it definitely does the trick. Then just on the other side of the nether hub right there, that looks awesome, doesn't it, from up here? I've never really glanced at it from this height before. Uh, over there, we have a new addition to the world, which is a bartering farm with piglins. So every single one of these are renamed, and all I have to do is just drop some gold in this corner right here, and they'll be dropping all the, all the loot into these chests for me to collect whenever I am ready. So yeah, all these I can just farm by dropping these guys gold and the stuff that doesn't stack like potions and water bottles will just go in here. And like, yeah, potions as well. I don't know if I said potions, but yeah, all of that will just go in here. So the last thing I actually want to show you guys on this world, which I would consider more of a major build is this bad boy right here. This is the new addition 
to the to the world that was done in 400 days this is the brand new gold farm uh, that i built and those are the coordinates for it on the never reef for those that want to go and explore it for yourself this is the gold farm and all i have to do is stand in this bit no that's where they actually die you just jump up here i just shoot the pigmen with a bow i don't have any arrows oh that's a shame actually wait no i missed wait i have infinity on my bow so let's just not do that <laughs> let's go ahead and just hit these guys they'll all get angry at me and they will all go and fall down here because they can't cross me here i have to stand dead in the center and then they will just jump in here it'll get very 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 loud but they'll just drop me a bunch of xp so as i said this world download is available for patreons only that get the ender crystal or dragon tears so that is how you can get the world download and rather than me giving it out because last time this happened i give a world download out it got redistributed everywhere and i mean everywhere so patreon is going to be the way i'm going to do this from this point forward just to try and stop that from happening so hopefully you understand and also, for those that do decide to become a Patreon, anyone that gets any tier on Patreon will have their name in my outro scenes on every video from this point forward. I'm getting that worked out, so there'll be a thank you page at the end of every video with the current Patreons on as a thank you. So yeah, that's the world tour. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.